3 minutes and 25 seconds. It's not a lot of time, but it changed Gift Orban's life completely. Because it's the total amount of time that it took him to score the fastest hat trick in the history of UEFA club competitions, and he's only been in Europe for a year. The ridiculous display against Turkish giants Bishakşehir here was crowned by a searing strike from outside the box, and it lit the footballing world on fire about a youngster from Nigeria that seemingly came from nowhere. Except not seemingly, literally came from nowhere. With the level of scouting in the modern game, data analysts and scouting networks are hardly ever forced to raise an Ancelotti-style eyebrow when a player becomes a breakout star in a top 10 league. Sure, they've known about him for years. He's been a professional for just about 12 months, has no academy upbringing, was an amateur before that, and yet he is scoring a goal per game while lighting up European club competition. As you would probably expect, his ridiculous story is littered with what-ifs and a healthy dose of luck that has produced a wonder kid that some are saying could break the entire Belgian league transfer record when he leaves. And of course, he's not actually from nowhere. He's just from nowhere, according to Google, if you try and find any of the clubs he played for. But Gift Orban cut his teeth playing in the lower leagues of Togo. Your quick geography lesson is Togo is right here, nestled next to a couple of nations that are quite fabulous in the footballing sphere, including Nigeria, where the other half of Gift Orban's family is from. But his mom's from Togo, and that's why he spent the time there. And it was after moving to the lower leagues of Togo that Gift Orban had his first of many strokes of luck to allow him to find the European limelight. He participated in a trial program in Togo's capital, Lome, right here. And mind you, this trial program in Togo was in 2021. It was two years away from the current day and well after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. This was not that long ago. And he is still trialing in the Togolese capital as an amateur. But while he was there, he caught the eye of famed Nigerian scout Ola Fowler. Now, Ola Fowler invited Gift Orban to and essentially another trial opportunity in Uyo, Nigeria. Now, this was a trial tournament set up by a pretty significant figure in Nigeria. Nigerian football. An agent named Ata Aneke, who represents Odia Nagalo, David Datra Fafana, and a host of other players. Now, according to this article by Indian Express, this was his last real go. It was the big opportunity to make it as a footballer, and if it didn't work out, he was gonna become a policeman. Real fork in the road moment here. The format of the tournament was you played nine games over six days in front of scouts from a very wide variety of clubs that were there to see if there might be any talent lurking in Oyo, Nigeria. And there was. Obviously. The agent, Aneke, withdrew Gift Orban from the tournament after just two matches. He said there was no point in keeping him for longer. He scored three goals in one of the games, but it wasn't just that he scored, it was how. His confidence, the way he struck the ball, I instantly knew that this was a player that would go far. And he was not the first person to watch Gift Orban play for about five minutes and have the same conclusion. The man that had seen the most was a scout from, of all places, Norway, named Torgir Bjarman. He made regular pilgrimages to Africa to scout for his club, Stabæk, who had just been relegated at the time to the second division of Norway. And he came away from the tournament absolutely convinced that Gift Orban needed to be signed immediately. He said it was a very physical tournament and Gift stood out with his scoring abilities and link-up play. I decided to invite him to our preseason training camp. And to update you on the timeline here, this is in the beginning of 2022. Alarmingly close to the present day and this guy is still not actually on a team. Amazingly, after joining for the preseason camp, Gift Orban did not win over the coaches at Stabæk and he returned to Nigeria when his visa expired in February. According to this athletic article though, over the next few months, Stabæk still couldn't settle on a regular first team strike and invited Gift Orban to come back and see if he could develop with the second team, which was playing in the Norwegian 4th Division. The Norwegian 4th Division. So in May of 2022, 12 months ago, he packed his bags and left Nigeria again to head to nice warm Norway and play in the Norwegian 4th Division. There were some concerns about visa stuff, so he signed initially on loan from the club that he picked up with upon going back to Nigeria, Bison FC. That is a team you are welcome to Google. You will find absolutely nothing about them other than there is a team in Nigeria named Bison FC. Just ask Gint's head of scouting, who described the club 
to The Athletic as a club you can't even find on Google. No matter, though, because Gift Orban wasn't in football's no man's land anymore, and when he landed in the Norwegian 4th Division, the ground shook. Bjarman, the scout for Steibeck that had recommended his signing, said he scored in every game there, so he gave him a chance in a cup fixture in June. June, 11 months ago. In his first cup match against Notodden, he scored. In his next match against Gilvik Lin, he scored twice. Those might have been semi-pro teams, but those two cup performances were enough to land Gift Orban finally in the first team in the Norwegian second division with Stabæk. Here is how it went. Away to Mjondalen, two assists. Then against Sjordals Blink, two goals, one assist. Alad Brand, goal. Kefum, goal. Sogndal, two goals. Skeed, goal. Fredrikstad, two goals. That's consecutive. In his first seven starts, he had at least one goal contribution in every match for Stabæk. The speed at which Gift Orban was able to make the transition from playing in Nigeria with Bison FC to playing with a professional team in the Norwegian second division in Stabæk was staggering, even for his teammates. Stabæk midfielder Fredrik Krogstad said usually it takes an African player about a year to adjust to Norwegian football because of style and culture, they're very different. Gift adapted amazingly fast, it was just crazy. He learned everything very quickly and became a leader. Now because of the scouting, Norway is actually something of a pipeline for African players, but clearly Gift Orban was just different. And the club knew it too. After just the first three starts in that ridiculous run, Stabæk sold Oliver Valiker Edverson. Ed, Ed, Edvardson. I tried. And part of that sale was rolled over to activate the buyout clause in Gift Orban's loan so that Stabæk could finally have him on the team outright. This meant he now was officially on Stabæk as of about nine and a half months ago. And remember where we're ending up here. We end up with him breaking the European club competition record for hat trick speed. That's where we're going in nine and a half months. Gift Orban then kept up his hot pace. And even though the season was well underway, Norway plays a summer league so they don't freeze to death, Orban tied for the golden boot. In just 22 matches, he had 16 goals to go with seven assists in half of a season, his first half season as a professional halfway around the world, or like over the up significantly up. The downside for him was the season was over in November. Stabæk had won promotion back up to the top flight, and some scouts around Europe had taken actual notice of his three-month whirlwind performance. This would become the second time that a scout in Europe would bank essentially their entire reputation on Gift Orban being great. And that would be Samuel Cardenas, who is the head of scouting at Ghent. And he's talking about Gift everywhere. He told this BBC article from the first time I watched Gift. I saw something special in him. His movement is exceptional. He is complete in the sense that he can combine and score in every way, technically. He told The Athletic, I put my hand in the fire for him. I pushed for him a lot for three months, but the only way that you can do deals like this is to be brave and be trusted. And all of that determination is eventually what convinced the CEO of Belgian giants Ghent, Michel Lauagy, to sign him. He said all credit to the scouting. Samuel pushed hard for this transfer, and rightly so. Obviously, with someone that's only played professionally for like three months, even Cardenas knew it was a gamble. The reason it was such a significant gamble is that buying a player that has played in the Norwegian second division to play in the top flight in Belgium is one thing. Spending three million euros for the privilege is a whole other thing. But on January 31st of this year, Gift Orban was signed by Ghent for over 3 million euros. And that's where we enter the most amazing part of this story, because even though he was moving from the Norwegian second division, and of course he hadn't played since November, he didn't miss a beat. He made his debut finally on February 11th and was in the starting lineup against Westerloo. He scored two goals. Then four matches later, he scored four against Solta Varagam. Four goals. It was the first four goal performance by a Ghent player since 1958 in a competitive match, and it took him five games to do it. Gift Orban started so well that even Cardenas, the guy who put his hand in the fire for him, was surprised. I would lie, though, if I said that I expected him to perform so fast. Yeah! Belgian commentator Peter Vandenbemt told the BBC, I have never seen a player who entered the competition so smoothly. And right as this groundswell of hype was reaching its apex, three days after his four-goal performance against Solta Varagam, it happened. The three minutes and 25 seconds that put the world on notice. It was actually his third consecutive match in the Europa Conference League knockouts with a goal. He scored in the first leg against Bashak Shakir and in the second leg of the previous round against 
Karabagh, the Azerbaijani giants. In April of 2022, Gift Orban was in Nigeria playing for Bison FC after a failed trial with a Norwegian second division club. One year later, he has 15 goals in 17 matches, all competitions, with Ghent in the top flight of Belgium. It certainly boggles my mind, and apparently he still obviously hasn't found his stopping point yet. He hasn't found his level, and everybody around him seems to be aware of that. Ghent's manager, whose name I will not attempt to say in an effort not to insult him, Hein van Hazebroek said, I hope he stays here, but he's too good a talent to be here. This guy was in the Norwegian second division like four months ago. He was in Nigeria a year ago going on trial in Togo trying to get onto a team. And now he is too good to be on Ghent. It's insane. But clearly that's what everybody thinks. And it's not just his product on the field. He's a mentality monster too. I mean, all over our research about Gift Orban is every person that's ever been around him talking about the ridiculously high level of intensity that honestly makes you think of Ronaldo when you hear about it. I mean, he is describing exactly how he once passes into his feet and furious when he feels like a goal-scoring opportunity was missed. But unlike some of the other goats, apparently he's also a great guy. Like, he just has a switch in his brain that other perfectionists don't. So he's not a locker room problem at all. Stefan Schmidt, who's a journalist that covers Ghent, said that Orban is speaking and making jokes with everybody. He's a phenomenon, even off the pitch. Everybody loves him. And his professionalism, even though he's only been professional for like less than a year, is apparently fantastic. The Ghent scout Cardenas said he's only been in Europe for 12 months, but he eats well, he sleeps well, he knows what to do. He has his goals and he's staying on the ground. I've been really impressed by it. In short, there's no reason why the meteoric ascent of Gift Orban can't continue. He's the self-taught complete package the bolt of lightning from nowhere that every scouting department in the world is hoping they have the opportunity to find. And I am going to be tremendously excited. He's still scoring goals right now. And if you enjoy the research and the stories, do consider subscribing. Every subscription helps my hair grow back, so I really do appreciate it. You can also keep binging videos. Don't let me stop you. This is a video about a country that doesn't have a national team. The only United Nations country that doesn't have a national team. They're lonely and interesting.